Many writers over the years have said, you know, when the UN started, when the EU started, they take over. And uh, a lot of people who were involved in the early days of the United Nations and the EU itself wanted them to become, you know, more powerful organisations because they thought the UN and the EU and other organisations would be forces for good. That we'd get th past 300 years of European wars, of, of lots of death and lots of armed conflict. And there was a kind of utopian view that if we could get beyond the nation state, if we could move to larger organisations, the world would be more peaceful. So that view was very dominant in the 1940s, 50s, 60s. I think as the EU and the UN have developed, what people have observed is that they've become more and more the forums within which interstate rivalry takes place. So you look at Syria and you look at the UN's inability to act in Syria that's not because the UN is unable to act, it's because the nation states, especially in the Security Council, are capable of blocking action. You look at the EU and you think, well, why can't the EU solve you know, the Greek crisis? Uh, why can't it solve the problem of the Euro? And it's not that the EU can't, it's because there are different national interests sitting there within the European Union. So despite the fact that a lot of people saw the UN and the EU and other organisations as eroding the state and replacing the state, my view is that politics occurs in a variety of locations and thus the EU and the UN have become, I'm afraid to say, less independent actors and much more the tools of state for the furtherance of their foreign policies.